Good afternoon and welcome to LVS Perspectives number 23. Everyone's invited a legal perspective. So today I'm joined by Gareth and Sarah from 3PB for uh, Barristers. I hope I said that right. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and <laughs> we've been so fortunate to have them come into school today to talk to our, our pupils. And in fact, the talks are going on all day and then after school with our staff and governors as well. So I'm going to pass straight over to Gareth and Sarah, who are going to take you through what they've been talking about today. And we can answer any of your questions, too. So please bring them through on the Facebook uh, live chat. Or if they're a little bit more sensitive, I've got my mobile phone. I'm allowed to have my mobile phone with me at the moment. And I can check them on my personal email. So please send them through to c.cuniff at lvs.ascot.sk.uk. OK, so please bring those questions through. We'll answer them at the end. So over to Gareth and Sarah. Welcome to LVS Perspectives. Very nice Thank to you. see you. Thanks very much for inviting us. Shall I do a very quick spiel about us, tell you about us? Uh, we can see that there are 11 viewers out there, so very nice to see you all. Please do fire those questions in. Sarah and I are barristers at Three Paper Buildings. Uh, we are a national chambers. We travel all over the place. We've got six centres uh, as part of us, and I think about 200 practising barristers at the last count. Sarah, you do employment and education. Uh, I do employment and sport. Uh, both of us uh, have a, uh, I hope, an interesting perspective to bring on the sorts of safeguarding issues that you guys are obviously confronting today. And we are delighted to have been uh, invited today to talk to your students uh, and your sons and daughters, as it must be. Yes, yeah, so today we've spoken to the uh, students about everyone's invited. We've made sure they've understood what that is. And for absolute clarity now, um, what is it? Well, it's a website that's been established. It was established last year and it allows the reporting anonymously of complaints of sexual assault, sexual harassment and acts of a similar nature anonymously um, online. So what has happened is that since March of this year, there have been 15,000 testimonies uploaded to the website. They involve schools. They involve colleges, they involve currently 113 universities and so therefore it's clearly a very prevalent problem in the education sector. Because of that, Ofsted are currently undertaking an inquiry and the police have also indicated that they are going to be sifting through the complaints and we understand they're going to be taking steps to contact schools and colleges and universities that are named on the website. Now, we found so far that, uh, particularly in years 11 and 12, a lot of the students were familiar with what the website actually is and what everyone's invited actually was. Uh, but we did um, find that that is not the case through all of the age groups that we've currently spoken to. Um, we have shown them some videos about the type of issues that are raised by everyone's invited and they basically cover the type of issues that are summarised there on the screen. So it's on the spectrum from rape, sexual assault, abuse, um, to verbal harassment, inappropriate comments and the like. But we've also found it's uh, and thought it was important to emphasise to the pupils that it isn't just conduct of a sexual nature that's not appropriate at school, but that it also extends to uh, bullying, discrimination, harassment because of other protected characteristics such as disability, race, religion, sexual orientation, just to use a few of the examples, that the students have been extremely receptive to the talks and very interactive both in the male and female student populations. So just pause there and ask that the video uh, ITV News can be played please are a symbol of the accusations now attached to many schools. Educate your sons, read the signs, but interrogate them too, say police, as today they called on parents to report any child suspected of abusing or harassing others. If a son makes a disclosure about the fact that they've committed a criminal offence, I, I think this is where the values of, of those parents really come to the fore. And they should then be making that disclosure. They should be getting contact with their local police forces.
Today, police and the government promised a helpline to report allegations, with over 8,000 now posted on this website, where students have been telling their stories. I was sexually harassed by a member of my class for a year, and I didn't tell anyone for six months. A boy in my year joke strangled me to get me to kiss him, and then pushed me onto the floor and climbed on top of me. A boy in my year at school raped me, it's genuinely awful to still see him every day. Many of those testimonies are from private school pupils now going public. Ava wrote to one head teacher in London last week detailing alleged abuse. There were rankings of body parts being shouted out across school corridors and across classrooms. And it really begs the question there that not only is this culture incredibly pervasive, but how proud are we of this culture and how much complicity is there from everyone around? Some are asking if schools are part of the problem. Do you think some schools have covered this up to protect their reputations and their commercial interests? I think it's really important to say that there is actually no evidence of that. Nobody's going to be more keen than schools to ensure that everybody is safe and happy and flourishes. But the ribbons on railings speak of a scandal in which schools are increasingly entangled. Paul Brand, News at 10. OK, so that clip was only shown to the Year 13 students because of their age. For the younger students, we've used a cartoon that summarises um, the concept of sexual harassment and what may or may not be appropriate. Um, just using some school examples. Um, if that could be played, please. It's you again. Gosh, this is the third time today. No, I don't care if this is my once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get the Sucker 3000 vacuum cleaner. Please, just stop harassing me. Sexual harassment is a type of bullying <laughs> intended to hurt or intimidate someone. It can include making Ooh. sexual jokes, <laughs> comments, or gestures to or about Ooh. someone. Spreading sexual okay. rumors in Ooh. person, by text, or online. Writing sexual messages about people on bathroom stalls or in other public places. Showing someone <laughs> inappropriate sexual pictures or videos. Touching, grabbing, or pinching someone in a deliberately sexual way asking someone to send you naked pictures of herself or himself, pulling at someone's clothing, and brushing up against someone in a purposefully sexual way. If you are being harassed, don't blame yourself. The idea that someone was asking for it because of something they did, said, or were wearing is false and unacceptable. It often can be helpful to start by telling the person doing the harassing to stop. Let him or her know that this behavior is not okay with you. If that doesn't stop the harassment, don't just ignore the behavior. Usually, ignoring it won't make it stop. Instead, tell a trusted adult about it. Telling go. someone sooner leads to faster results. You should keep a record of the events that have happened. That way you'll have them if your school or family has to take legal action. Remember, no one has the right to sexually harass or bully anyone else, no matter what. Till next time! Don't forget to visit me at amaze.org or go to my YouTube channel to watch more. Bye. OK, so off the back of um, the videos, we provided um, a list of the types of behaviours that they might have personally experienced or they might have participated in to illustrate what may or may not be appropriate in not just a school environment, but for the older students particularly, a work environment or moving on to university. Okay, and we asked the students whether they'd observed that type of behaviour and the majority of them indicated that they had. Um, we were careful not to ask for specific examples because understandably it's a sensitive topic and initially they were a little bit reluctant to put their hands up and get involved, but they became increasingly active in the participation, didn't they, Gareth? They did, um, and in fact in a very impressive way. Um, this is, for obvious reasons, fairly 
difficult language to use, uh, it's hard hitting subjects uh, and can cause considerable emotion, particularly if you have uh, experienced or witnessed any of this type of behaviour. But from my perspective, I don't know about you, but I'm very impressed um, with the manner in which the pupils engaged with us actually. Uh, so it was, it was good. Absolutely, incredibly switched on um, from my perspective as a pupil population. Uh, you'll see towards the end of the slide, we have impressed that this isn't just something that happens to female students or females in the workplace. It's something that can happen to males as well. And indeed, it's not just conduct by the opposite sex. It can be by the same sex as well um, to illustrate that this sort of discussion applies to all of them uh, in the student population. Uh, we referred to some of the um, statistics that the Department of Education has referred to in its 2018 guidance about sexual harassment um, at school. And for example, uh, it's based on the Girl Guidings Girls Attitude Survey in 2017. 64% of girls aged 13 to 21 had experienced sexual violence or sexual harassment at school in the past year. That's what that survey indicated. This included 39% having their bra strap pulled by a boy and 27% having their skirts pulled up within the last week. Um, in addition to that, to illustrate that this happens to um, all students, we cited the following, a third of female students and 6% of male students in mixed um, sex schools reported that they personally experienced some form of sexual harassment at school. Almost a quarter of female students and 4% of male students at mixed sex schools um, had been subjected to unwarranted physical touching of a sexual nature whilst at school. And we use that as the opportunity to sort of bring it to them in context to illustrate that it's not a, a rare issue. These things do happen and that parents, um, guardians, teachers and authority figures, or whoever they want to speak to, probably won't be surprised if they raise issues, won't be unapproachable about such issues because it's the sort of thing that people are looking out for actively uh, and would support the raising of. We asked them uh, about their social media accounts and what they'd seen because of course this isn't just the sorts of behaviour which happens in person, it's not just comments made in person, uh, it's obvious isn't it that it's now sadly rife, cyberbullying is rife and for a young generation now who have considerable access to social media uh, and as we've been learning, not Facebook or Twitter that we perhaps use, uh, but the use of Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, those sorts of things. Uh, and it was interesting to hear the manner in which they use the accounts and the sorts of things that they have seen online uh, as a result. Uh, and of course, um, I mean, it's every parent's nightmare, isn't it? Trying to keep up to date with social media, trying to stay one step ahead of the game so that you understand what it is that your children are getting up to or what risks they might be um, subjected to, but it, it certainly um, provoked uh, interesting discussion. Uh, and I think what we then went on to do was to mention some real life examples. Now, um, as you might imagine, uh, given what we do, um, we have seen some difficult and harrowing things during the course of our careers, uh, but our purpose today was not to shock the students uh, or to frighten them into the sorts of difficult things that um, has unfortunately happen. The idea really was to deliver two messages. The first, that if you, uh, if this sort of conduct occurs, it can have dramatic consequences, even if it's the sort of conduct that happens in the briefest of moments. Uh, and the second point uh, is that it really needs to be reported. It's all very well telling people not to do things, but we live in a sad world in which this sort of thing goes on uh, and in, perhaps in some circles is rife uh, and it's important to reinforce that message uh, if it happens if you see it happens or see it happen or it happens to you that you really must report it so for example I gave um, the, I think the first example I call um, loosely PC Snapchat uh, 
without giving the full details of the case. Uh, it was a police officer who had misused his position of authority. He had uh, used Snapchat to request any number of contacts um, to make friends with people on Snapchat. Uh, and during the course of one evening, had um, on an antisocial behaviour patrol, uh, had um, come into contact with some youths uh, for which he had then posed photographs. Uh, and during the course of that evening, he had then uh, seen a photograph of himself pop up on Snapchat, had then engaged in contact with the youths, uh, including taking a photograph of himself uh, of his top half, uh, and that was reported. Uh, and it was reported, it was dealt with by the police authority uh, in an excellent way, investigated, uh, and that person is no longer a serving police officer. But again, the message there being that it's the type of misconduct which happened in a second, uh, in terms of taking that photograph and sending it via Snapchat. But the second point is that that person who received the photograph reported that straight away to uh, her father uh, and um, it then got reported to the police. Okay, so then we wanted to illustrate, because we were looking at consequences of behaviour as well, to illustrate that this isn't just something for school that you then move on, it's important to consider it and get it right now uh, for future reference. We looked at the, um, it's a case in the Employment Appeals Tribunal uh, from 2014 involving game retail and effectively an employee got dismissed for expletive and obscene comments on his personal Twitter account and that the purpose of this was to illustrate to them you've got to be very careful and you need to think about what you write on Twitter and what the consequences of that might be and we had quite an interesting debate particularly with year 13 um, about whether or not um, somebody should be dismissed for something of that nature when it's not sexual harassment, it's not overt discrimination for example, it's not racism. So that was quite interesting I it thought, was. wasn't it? Yes it was. There was another discussion, would you, don't worry about the photo on the train yeah. um, or, or even um, that, that case or, or indeed that example. No. Perhaps that one was the slide which sparked the largest discussion, wasn't it? Yes, yes. So th this involved a high school, it was a case in the High Court quite a few years ago now, um, but as you appreciate, a lot of the cases involving minors are anonymous um, or subject to orders, so you can't refer to them. This one isn't, but effectively it was a 13-year-old boy at a high school, he'd had allegations of sexual harassment against a female pupil, they were very serious, they're summarised there on the slide, they involve um, touching in an intimate fashion during a lesson, ignoring um, the student when she asked him to stop, and then when um, the student confronted him um, after the lesson, acting in an uh, aggressive way, threatening way, using excessive force to push her to the ground, it was witnessed by other students and they all reported it and it was investigated. And we wanted to spark a debate with them about what they thought might happen to the student. And I, I found this particularly interesting um, because a lot of them um, didn't anticipate that the student would be expelled. Um, I think suspension was mentioned. It was. Um, some didn't know whether it would be investigated. There was a bit of a lack of certainty that the certainly in the old age group there was a more definitive conclusion that the boy would be expelled, but there was certainly not that clear an answer. I found. Uh, I don't know what you think, Gareth, in the earlier the younger age groups that we've spoken to so far. Indeed, and what we then discussed, and I think perhaps the most fertile conversation we had with the age groups this morning, was to, if that sort of conduct occurred, everyone appreciated that it was wrong, that you can't behave like that, it's obvious really, uh, and bearing in mind we've been talking to the years 11, 12, 13, it doesn't come as a surprise that they recognise that that is inappropriate behaviour. But really the question then, which we posed, what do you do about it? How do you go about raising that as a concern? And what might cause someone not to want to raise a concern about that sort of conduct? And we had a very lively discussion 
uh, a lot of engagement uh, and some interesting ideas coming forward as to why uh, matters might not go reported. So um, we, we've spoken to them about WhatsApp as well and inappropriate comments. Um, they've been um, told about an incident that took place, it was well publicised in the media at Exeter University involving a WhatsApp group by uh, law students or a group of them and the outcome of that, so there were totally inappropriate comments being made, racist, that sort of thing. Um, five of them um, got thrown off the course effectively. Two of them had legal providers withdraw employment as well. So we spoke to them about that. Uh, just again to illustrate, you know, it's not, it's, if you see things on WhatsApp or in messages that you're not happy with, the right thing to do is to raise it and report it. Very good. Well, I mean, that, that's really the message. And I think it perhaps is worthy just flicking through to the last slide. Uh, which, when we were talking to the students, left it on a question of not just um, raising it to a teacher, not just raising it to an adult, but there are different mechanisms by which you can raise these incidents, of course, including contacting the NSPCC. Uh, I don't know, Christina, you're expecting some questions to come in. Is there anything we can do to yeah, answer absolutely. the questions of those watching? Thank you very much for the presentation. And if you, if you do have any questions, please send them through on the chat. Or I, I do have my, my own personal, or well, my school email on, on my phone if you want to send any questions through there. But just a couple, picking up on a couple of things, and, and I think for our Year 13 pupils in particular, who are going off to university, there's a very, very kind of like a, a strong message there about all sorts of problems that could occur. And you told a really, really good example of what happened on a bus uh, at university. And ironically, it, one of our ex-students was one of the girls responsible for bringing that forward right. um, to the university. So I was right. really, so I don't want to look over that way because I'm looking in that camera over sure. there. Sure, so. understood. <laughs> and um, so I do remember this quite distinctly. And I mean, it was, it was such a case. Could you tell us a little bit more? Because we've got a lot of parents out there who'll be watching this, whose children's going off. And it is really quite frightening for parents when their children go off to university. Oh, it must be frightening. Uh, I've got two small children. Uh, and at the moment, I, as, as I said this morning, my greatest concern is they learn how to access Fortnite, uh, but they're only we, so I'm managing to avoid that just yet. But this was, uh, I imagine, uh, a lot of parents' nightmares. Uh, I think the case involved 18, 19 year olds. It was a rugby initiation uh, at a university. Uh, initiation, I think it's now referred to as hazing, uh, in which uh, they had uh, got dressed up, fancy dress. I think the theme was Top Gun, so I'm sure a lot of people dressed up as Maverick and Goose that ended up then on uh, a bus, handcuffed in pairs, uh, and uh, after being no doubt overly refreshed with alcohol, they had engaged in highly inappropriate behaviour in a public place on the top deck of the bus, which included uh, performing sexual acts on one another in public. Now, question whether each of those individuals involved in that process consented to their behaviour, but they did uh, carry out that behaviour and they didn't complain themselves about the conduct, but it was reported uh, obviously by, um, as you know, one of your ex-pupils, it was reported by uh, four girls uh, and it involved in those individuals um, coming before the criminal courts uh, and being convicted of a crime. Uh, but it's the sort of engagement, again, it's the sort of behaviour, peer pressure, uh, alcohol involved, it's the sort of thing that fortunately can happen at university. Um, it doesn't make it right, but it, it's the sort of thing that can happen. And again, as the message this morning was, it can happen very quickly. You can find yourselves involved in this type of conduct without really knowing about it until it's too late. But it's not just a question of what happens, it's what do you do about it. And of course, in that particular scenario, the education that you obviously given those young ladies and they were prepared to report it and well done them for doing so. Thank you and, and another question I know a lot of parents will probably be thinking and, and, and this can be quite shocking too because obviously I have peers other head teachers throughout the school and we hear various horror stories of things that have happened. Um, could you explain a little bit more about sort of the age when you're criminally responsible and how young have you seen issues like this filter through and what's happened? Do you want to deal with that? <laughs> I mean, I've died. It's been a long time since I was knocking around the criminal courts, but you deal with them from the age of 13, isn't it? This is when you become... Well, you're, you're going to step in and correct me in a moment. I don't do crime anymore. 
but I've certainly dealt with teenagers a lot uh, in the course of stuff that I've dealt with, and not just from um, the old days in the criminal courts, but also from a rugby disciplinary perspective, I deal with um, rugby disciplinary matters, and, and sadly these types of behaviour do go on. And one of the things that we were asking the students today is what, what we what they would suggest to a school like this, what would you advise happens? And actually the message was that, yes, we should talk more often about these types of behaviours, but actually to the younger age groups, and the suggestion was, from one age group, was that we should speak to the years, I think it was seven and eight, wasn't it? Mm. That really it's these type of, uh, that, what's that, 11-year-olds? Mm. Talk to people from the age of 11? There we are. Yeah, they, they, a few of them mentioned that actually, that they'd seen the behaviours earlier in the school um, or, you know, and therefore wondered if it could be tackled earlier on. Uh, I think you, Eleven, suggested that. Yeah, and, and ironically, we, when we ran a, a very similar session a couple of weeks ago, when we first started talking about everyone's invited, one of the parents actually brought through on the chat that they wished that we were uh, having these talks for children a lot younger as well. So I think taking that on board, this is something we will do. And I think when we come back in the autumn term, we need to look how far down we have these talks with our children, because it is a sad world. And I, I know Sarah Garing, you're on the chat here. She says, really interesting topic, slightly sad that this is the world we live in today. Yes. How will LVS deal with students accused of such behaviour? Is it the parents' responsibility to, to report this to outside agencies and the appropriate authorities? Right, okay, well, what I'm going to do is about reporting to outside agencies and, you know, if you as a parent had any worries or fears, can we, part, we answer that one first? So I'll pass that back to Gareth and Sarah. What, would, what should parents do with outside agencies if they have a concern? Well, there's nothing to stop a parent contacting the police or outside agencies if they wish to do so. Um, but they should, they should really raise it with the school as well for lots of reasons. Firstly, to get it reported. Secondly, then the school can put their systems in place to ensure that A, they've considered the safeguarding of other students as well. Steps might need to be taken in place for the particular pupil that is accused. In the um, Department of Education guidance, they, they're referred to as the accused perpetrator and also to support the victim as well, to record it. And of course, the school, where there are uh, issues around harm, have their own safeguarding responsibilities and would, in a lot of situations where we're talking about the type of conduct here, you know, serious sexual assault, harassment, those sorts of things, very likely be referring matters on to the police and the local authority in any event. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, 100 percent. And with school as well. And I heard some very good advice from Gareth and Sarah this morning about if something happens to a pupil, it's sometimes hard to bring that detail across. So write it down, write as much detail down as you can when, you know, bef while you can remember, while you, you, you know, while you can get a pen to paper and also then go and talk to any member of staff. Now, we have safeguarding posters up throughout the school with people who you can talk to, but you can talk to any member of staff. You can talk to me. All you have to do is stand outside my window and go, Oi, I need to talk to you, or send me an email, or go to reception and ask to, to talk. Because you, if this behaviour is going on in school, then we need to know about it. And it will be reported. Now, this thing I'm reporting now, this is where we might find that some children might clam up a little bit. Uh, Gareth, Sarah, do you want to um, elaborate on that? So what, what are the children worried about? What are they worried about reporting? Well, we, we've had a good discussion we didn't with... Uh, with them about this they were really engaging I think uh, there are lots of different reasons one is um, it's about embarrassing um, and they don't want it to blow up they don't want to create a problem I think you know that one of them said that you know they just want an easy life they don't want to create difficulties um, they were worried it wouldn't be taken seriously that they yes. wouldn't be believed um, or that if yeah if it was reported to school nothing would happen as a result uh, if it was reported to the police, they'd be worried about it being taken seriously, uh, or perhaps excuses would be made as to why particular conduct had occurred. Uh, even one very bright individual had noticed that there is a considerable backlog at the moment in the criminal in the criminal justice system, such that actually, even if it was reported to the correct authorities and dealt with by the police, that actually it would take potentially years to get to court, and this would be left hanging over them. So it, it, was, uh, it was a lively discussion and some, some good matters aired. I, I thought another very interesting point that was raised today 
um, was if we raise it then people are going to say that we've brought the conduct on so you know our skirts too short is the way we're dressing it's the way we're behaving so victim shaming to use a, a you know a more common term so they seem very attuned to that as well which tells me that you know that they need to be supported and the stereotypes of well you've encouraged that conduct um, firmly need to be stayed away from um, also um, very interesting um, from the female population of students indicating that quite often they're met with comments like boys will be boys it's a bit of banter it's just what they're like um, and making clear to them that that isn't right that um, they should be raising and reporting these matters and it's not right to say that um, boys will be boys or phrases of that nature to undermine the allegations that they they raise um, the only other point that comes to mind as well is again it's a really valid point is you know is it inappropriate or is it something that I should brush over where's where's the barometer and of course this is a really difficult one for parents and the school and for the individual um, but I think th the way I've put it today is that if it makes you uncomfortable raise it discuss it and report it don't brush it to one side if it's something that you feel uncomfortable about and I think it's about raising those issues within the school in a supportive environment and they've also been told to raise it with parents you know guardians uh, older siblings people that they trust and that sort of thing as well as the staff I think also on that as well you know safeguarding is our priority so we sometimes will have to pass this on to outside agencies and the police, especially if a criminal act has taken part in a place. We have a duty of care, we have to pass that on. And therefore, I think sometimes children might be a little bit concerned about coming forward. But the more we do this, before, the more it becomes more standard practice, then you know we can nail this behaviour because we're going to have to. I remember it happens to girls and boys as well which you know is a very strong message to all our children so another couple of questions coming up here um can you remind us who to report social media harassment to and is there jurisdiction beyond the uk okay this is a, this is a good one too so any concerns that you have if it's the infant and junior school the dsl down there report to mrs cox if it's in the senior school the dsl here is mrs collins so please send directly to them but you can report it to any member of staff and it will be passed on to the relevant person so with social media, we do have very strict guidelines about the use of social media and appropriate use. And we've actually, um, sort of, when we've been talking about this over the past week, we've actually looked at our homeschool agreement and our code of contact, code of conduct, which we'll be sending out again because we've actually upped it and we've had some stuff in there regarding inappropriate use of social media too. Now, anything that brings the school into disrepute, first of all, first of all that could be an expulsion straight away. It can be reported to the police as well, and the school will deal with it very severely. Now, outside of the UK, with the UK, outside of the UK, and maybe Gareth and Sarah might know a little bit more than I do here, we can report it in the UK and we can report it abroad. So, anything on that? Have you got any observations? Do you know anything about that at all? I'm afraid I don't. I've never had a an issue arise in reporting things abroad. I don't know if you have. No, but it's the, in, in the same way that who do you report it to? Well, you report you report it to in this case a school. It might be you report it to the local authority. You report it to the police. But you could also report it if, for example, it's the use of um, Snapchat mm. or it's the use of Facebook or it's the use of Twitter. You then report it through their reporting lines, uh, and it may be dealt with by them. And another one here, are these issues included in the school's PHSE curriculum or will they be in the future? So we do have such topics, but I think what's happened is things have sped up very, very quickly. And just before it, these holidays, I think you could see there were certain things coming through in the press. And I remember thinking this is going to become really significant. And then obviously over these the holidays, it did. So we've got to open our eyes a little bit more. I said that in a previous perspectives where we now need to look at our curriculum going right back, maybe to year, year six, year seven, after what's been discussed today. Are we hard hitting enough We've got to make the children aware without scaring them, and it's finding that balance as well. So uh, another comment here. I don't think that children understand the repercussions of what they put up with on social media. I entirely agree. Yeah. And actually, that's one of the messages that we've been trying to drive home as much as possible, uh, is that if you, if you do put these things on Twitter, on 
Facebook, wherever it might be, is the sort of thing that can come back and haunt you later on. It may, if you commit a criminal act, of course, it can prevent you getting certain types of jobs. Uh, if you've got, uh, if you actually some of the examples we gave were employment examples where this type of conduct has been picked up uh, and has led to people being dismissed for gross misconduct. So I, I entirely agree with that, uh, that viewpoint uh, and it's something that we've been trying to drive home today. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, we've got another one here. Sorry, there's some, some nice comments coming about through here, aren't there? Yeah, about sport. Yeah, well, let, let me just touch on that briefly. That's something that I mentioned today, and I don't know, um, Sarah, thank you for your comment. Uh, if I may say, I, I entirely agree with you. Uh, as both someone who deals with sport on a professional level, uh, not as a player, um, but dealing with um, sports regulation discipline, but also as a parent uh, of two young boys who are, interested in sport it is something which concerns me but actually safeguarding in sport is something that here in this country is actually quite advanced and it's probably advanced because it's had to deal with some very serious issues in the recent uh, years you mentioned football uh, of course um, you may have seen that there was the Sheldon report published in March I think it was uh, and if you haven't seen it I thoroughly thoroughly recommend it there was always uh, there was also a report done by the Lawn Tennis Association recently uh, into certain safeguarding matters and it's it, they really are worth reading and it's not just to see the types of behavior which in times gone past ha have been gotten away with but it's the way in which sport is seeking to address those problems now and for example the FA supported by the Premier League and all the other um, sports uh, football organizations are they're really pushing at the moment to try and prevent that type of conduct happening but also if it happens to make sure that the reporting of it is picked up much sooner uh, and that really is um, it's got to be a dual faulting great and this is the um, you, you don't normally do this kind of thing with schools so this is a this is sort of a one-off first time thing for the two of you isn't it, it is. have you enjoyed your time with us today so far i certainly Absolutely. have yeah i yeah. certainly have and actually as i uh, have already mentioned have been particularly impressed with the engagement of your pupils because it's not easy language and certainly I think back to what I would have been like as a 15, 16, 17 year old and it would have been difficult mm. talking about this type of stuff uh, but they've been very mature and have engaged with us which is what we'd hoped for but not necessarily expected. And I think the good thing about it and I think from from what you've told me so far I think it's going to draw out some things too. I hope so. You know, you know we won't be the only school not to have had any issues and I think it will draw out some things which is good because people need to come forward and tell us what's happening yes. and if they're being made to feel uncomfortable too and that goes for you know adults too you know in the workplace don't put up with it because it, it, we don't have to put up with it whether you're male or female and I often tell my own children it doesn't matter whether you're male or female when you're out and about you can be open to sexual aggression, aggression and harassment it goes both ways and it doesn't matter how old you are as well um, so if there are any other questions coming through, and um, we've got a couple of minutes left, but are there any comments that you'd like to make, Sarah and Gareth, about anything at all, about what you've seen, or any advice for parents? I think what, what I would uh, take, two takes from me, one is, I think, by having these discussions with the student population today, I think the school's ahead of the curve. It's a developing issue. Ofsted are due to deliver a report at the end of this month that the school will no doubt be eagerly anticipating and taking a look at. But also it's an opportunity now that we've had these discussions today and we'll continue to have them this afternoon for perhaps parents, guardians, family members to pick up the subject and use it as yes. an opportunity to say, well, what have you discussed today? You know, is there anything you want to tell me? And have it in a very laid back way because they've really been engaging today and I think that it's possible as you say that matters might be raised um, arising from the training uh, and talk today. And uh, Sarah mentioned also that um, her organisation they actually do a media check and yeah so do we I mean if I see applications the first thing I do is I go online and google the name and see what I can find and I'll ask other people as well so it's very very serious what's out there um, and Kay McCran obviously you've got two children in boarding um, will the boarders have their own discussion sessions about this topic? We've always felt that our children are very safe and looked after at school as boarders, but they are obviously extra potential concerns as well. So what we'll do, um, Kay, is we will pick this up in the boarding houses, pick the discussion up as well, because as you say, they're in our care, very good care, but it is a worry. It's a worry for any parent at all. Any other questions coming through? 
or any last comments that you'd like to make? I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed meeting your children. So thank you very much indeed for inviting us. It's been uh, it's been hugely entertaining. I, I, I hope that um, that it helps both your pupils, but also the school generally discuss these types of issues. Yeah, great. And if and parents out there, if you're watching and you're watching later tonight as well, if you have any concerns, just contact me and we'll pick up the discussion. Remember, we can zoom anytime, and that virtual door and nearly the physical door is always open. <laughs> soon to see you soon. So anyway, take care. Have a lovely weekend. No, it's only Monday. It's because we normally do this on <laughs> Friday. No one reminded me it was right. Don't have a lovely weekend because we've still got a long way to go. And I hope that's not going to be edited either out of the no, uh, this no, evening no, show, is it? No, that's good. What you see that's is good. what you get, anyway. You so I'll see you. Any, any concerns, contact me and have a lovely week. Bye bye. <laughs>